G'day everybody, uh, hanging here with Bruno on the porch, no kisses please. Uh, this is a video put together of the last, I don't know, week and a half. I've been so busy with this fella just looking after him that I haven't had a chance to really make much videos. Uh, thank you very much for your time watching this, and thanks for your comments, and sit back and enjoy all the bits and pieces of last week with uh, young Ethan, Dismo Duck, Bruno, and a whole lot more. See you in the video. Good boy. Good job. Yes, you good job. Hey? Good boy. The spirit based pen is going to ensure that we get uh, the clean sort of angle. There's a nice blue mark on there now. That's a diamond stone, not ceramic, not wet stone, diamond. Ceramic is rubbish if you're doing this sort of knife sharpening. The rotational flip system helps this here to maintain the same angle. And I can see straight away at the first one that I've got that perfect. There's not a line on each side. I've got a pretty, pretty sharp angle. It's about 20% can go sharper but for this it'll be fine so now that I've know that my angle's right I can start to do this nice sweeps I just checked it to make sure first if it wasn't I would have adjusted it here I would have lifted this up further but it's right so this is the same angle I used last time I haven't readjusted it and simply flip it over the reason I've got it over the bench here is I've got water to clean like so and we can do the same on the other side and you'll see the actual the blues actually come right through there almost it's starting to poke through I'll just zoom in a bit there you can just tell by the sound that it's doing the job beautifully and keeping that nice same edge you can actually see the edge on there almost I've gone right through to there and I'm now up to the 2000 just polishing and finishing off just to put a nice smooth edge but I'm also after this going to run over the strop and what I'm doing now too is I'm just using on here a little bit of glass cleaner it's really good to get the diamond bits off you've got to keep it clean as you go along because you don't want that to build up otherwise it doesn't work properly just like this here I think we're just about ready for the strop now. Careful not to cut your fingers because it's very sharp. Just come loose now, like so. This is a stropping compound. A little bit on the leather, like this here. Doesn't need much. He says as he puts heaps on. When you strop your knife, you want to have the same angle that you sharpened on. That's the first step, like this. But the most critical thing is when you come to the very end of your strop that you don't do that. This is a mistake a lot of people do. I'll go around this way to show you again on this side. It's just a straight line like that moving up there and lifting off. Again, not doing that at the end of the strop. And we'll do a few of this and see what the blade's like. Basically polishing the edge. Maybe right. we go get a tomato. What's it, bud? Maybe we go get a tomato. Try a tomato, yeah. <whistles> Just clean as a whistle. Not bad. Right. Go and cut some deer meat up. He's guarding. <laughs> you keen to come past that dog, mate? <laughs> He's no so it's friendly. He knows you, man. He knows you. That's okay, Bruno. How you going? Yeah, thanks. You all right? Good. Good to see you. Good. Sounds good, eh? Thank you very much, Chloe. 
Chloe from Swap Cafe keeps us a copy here. Ethan and I have been drinking this and we just run out. Today I'm picking up a ewe with a couple of lambs, a couple of twins, and they're three quarter merino cross something else. The idea is to get them down the back of the truck. And here's the race here, I'm gonna put them into. So we're gonna try and fill this gap up here. There's a sheet come out. Hey, well done! Well done. Yeah. You should be on Country County. You'd do it all without a dog. The electric fence. I think it was originally designed in New Zealand. That's a tester there. We got a spark or not? Oh, yep. Top one's going right. That's going right. That one's going right, and this one will be going right too. And there's our earth down in there. So a tester has an earth as well. And how it works is, well, you can see how it works. It goes in the battery and. Uh, the sheep touches it, earths it out, gets a belt. That's how far it goes. And over there you can see my merino and her two lambs. Just there, it's pretty dark now, we show up. And she's got a paddock to herself. There's actually a well there, and it's got a concrete slab. And I put that little shelter on top. That's a place that she can keep her feet dry because merino don't like their feet getting too wet. She's actually three quarter. So she's got a paddock all to herself. And old Big Zeke, well he's just pretending he's a sheep dog in the grass watching the sheep. done everything to try and save these plants but as you can see they're looking pretty bloody crook. We took the potty mix out and we put fine stone in but they just don't look good. I reckon I'm going to lose them. She's not good. Not good at all. That one's looking bloody crook. They're all looking crook. Just don't understand why. We've tried everything. The other plants are doing fine. What are your thoughts on it mate? Any ideas? I wouldn't have a clue. Eh? Maybe we need a hydroponic them like they do in Japan. That'd be cool. Do they hydroponic them in Japan? Yeah, they grow them in creeks, eh? Oh, yeah, true. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, the other ones, that one's actually four labour over there. The other ones that I've got are really going well, they're in potty mix. So. Yeah, there's a bit more bark in, in the other stuff. And it, yeah, I don't know, this stuff holds its moisture heaps, eh? Well, there's no moisture holding those stones now, they're still no. going, that's the reason I've changed it, so I'm, I'm bugging them, aren't I? Good dog. I was going to start chopping up that bit of venison, but. You okay, boy? You alright? You're sliding on that line, eh? Outside! Outside! You can't stand on that. Outside! But, uh, my tooth's really been giving me howl. I couldn't get any surgery on it because of COVID lockdown level 3. And I phoned the dentist again. I said, because I'm booked for November, I said, look, this is getting too bad. It's it's not that the tooth's hurt because the, the actual nerve in it has now died. So it's dead. It's died in the time I last saw the, the dentist. But what's happened is... It's infected and my whole jaw is swollen up and you probably noticed in the last few videos I've been a bit shit, a bit under the weather and the infection's gone from my jaw so I told them, because I booked up and she said oh we'll see what we can do so we've got a 3.30 appointment today which is in an hour so I thought well I'll cook up some steak because I can only chew on that side because there's no teeth on the other side so I'll chew my last bit of steak and from now on I won't better use the expression no chomping and chewing it'll be Nice gumming, because that's all I've got left when they take that out. I don't tell them to take it out, I think. That's the first bit of our venison from Bigsy. And over here, I've just just cooked this bit of cheap beef. I think it looks pretty good. This is the last bit of chomping and chewing I'll be doing for a while, because I'm just about to get my tooth pulled out. So I thought I'd enjoy that with some garlic and some nice avocado. It's going to take your moisture out a bit. But what do you got there? Salt? Salt and pepper. Yeah. Okay. Generally, you're better to leave your pepper on till afterwards because yeah. pepper burns in the pan. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
nine, ten. One, two, nine, ten. Done. Bring your board over, mate. We'll just stick it on that there. So you got a bit of uh, sashimi there still on there. Yum. My favourite. Just rest it for a while. So we'll keep cooking on that board for a while and then chop it up. Chop it up. Not bad. Rest it nicely. That's our beef. Steak. <laughs> I'm chewing on the tooth they're going to pull out. It's got no pain in it because the nerve's dead. Perfect good functioning tooth. It happens to have infection underneath it. Mmm. So you can rest that venison for the same amount of time. <laughs> Juicy the same amount of time that we actually cooked it. Yeah. And challenge it. Yeah. What's a lemon for, bud? You have it with your meal? Avocado, yeah. Lemon and avocado on you. Squeeze it yeah. in there. Nice. Make a guacamole inside the avocado. Oh, yep. Yeah. Cool. And just put that on your steak, there. Yeah? yeah, just mash it up and chuck it over it. That's yeah. a new one. Cool. I like that. I think the most common way to eat steak, the most preferred way is like this, is medium rare. I think it is. But um, I'm not sure. What are you guys out there? How do you eat your steak? Some people like it really well done. Yeah. I just like steak, I don't care really. <laughs> it's gonna be very rare that venison. It's a stag. Salt and pepper. Venison and guacamole first time. Oh yeah, she's rare. Ten seconds on each side, bud. Not bad. I'd actually call that blue before I call it rare, I think. I've never had that before. Um, there's some more pepper and guacamole, mate. Mmm. Hey. Can you slice me just another bit of venison? Can I just another piece by itself without the guacamole? Yeah. Because that venison tastes good. Yeah. This is um, this is a bit of stag, but it's a yearling. And uh, dare I say, my dog caught it. Bro. And we're, we're eating it pretty much uh, like that. I would say rare. Yum. Mmm. That is delicious. Absolutely delicious. That is so much nicer than that bit of beef. Good on you, Bigsy. Yeah, good on you, Bigsy. Good dog, Bigsy. Not bad dog. Good dog. I'm going to change him from being a uh, pig dog to an all-rounder. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to change my name from Filthy Pig Hunter to just Filthy Hunter. Oh, yummy. Ethan's just giving Bruno his medicine. He's had one already, and that's uh, the steak that Ethan couldn't eat, so Bruno gets to uh, have his medicine like that. Those well, are bigger than me belly. Yeah, I saw that when you chop it up, I thought, you're a keen man. <laughs> good boy. This morning he's had pork crackling and venison. You had a good life there, Bruno. Hey, mate. Good boy, aren't you, eh? He's a good dog, eh? He's a good boy. He's big old paws, eh? He loves the pats, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. That's it. All good rub downs. Yeah. So a few good rub downs. There's a good boy. Good dog, Bruno. There's a good boy. Eh? There's a good dog. <laughs> Back to sleep already, eh? I managed to get a last minute appointment at my dentist. And Steph Wills is a fantastic dentist. She's actually on holiday, so I'm seeing someone else, but I think I'm probably gonna ask just to get this tooth extracted, pulled out, because it's caused so much infection around here, and even though I've got nothing to chew on that side anymore, I think it's the right option. We'll report back later, let you know how we got on. Well, these guys, are just such a brilliant dentist. I'm, I'm numbed out on the side here. I've still got the tooth in my mouth, which is a good thing. The tooth was completely savable. Tui was my dentist. Tui, you did an awesome job, brother. So what he did was he numbed me down and then he 
drilled the old filling out and by fuck did it stink. No wonder I was crook. Jeez, we could all smell it. It was embarrassing. It's like I had the worst breath. Like it was a smell that you'd only imagine would come out of the devil's anus. It was like, fuck, is that me? And that was what was going down. That's why I was getting so sick. It's like, holy shit, and bits were going everywhere. And I was like, oh, you know what it's like. But he cleaned all that out. Then he put a medicine on it to, to clean it. And then he put an antibiotic to kill the water infections there on top of the tooth. And then he put like a, uh, a filling over that. And it's going to stay like that until next month. And then they're going to deep root canal it. The nerve's completely dead. It died. I knew it died. I could feel it dying when I was going through that hell a while ago. So it's completely dead. They're going to deep root canal it. And then there's a process. It's two more visits and get an actual crown eventually. They put that on a year later. What they do is they put a filling on so I can use the tooth. That way I can keep chewing meat. My doctor, Glenn Davies, said get it taken out because of infection. But the thing is, I've got one on this side that's that's not infected and it's working fine. I've got no tooth underneath it because that one there got stuffed up. So I'm, I want to have something to chew my meat on this side at least because I'm a meat eater. Anyway, that's a good outcome. It's going to be good to get my mouth back because right now I can't feel anything. That all happened in probably, I don't know, 40 minutes or less. It's done and done dusted. I'm going to start feeling better again. <laughs> I'm happy. I'm going to lose my wasabi. There's no doubt about it. It's dying. I put gravel down and I'm now starting to scratch my head and think can I make something which is going to be like a hydroponic system where the water is flowing through stones. I changed the potting mix, put stones in, still didn't work, so this old bed here might be a good start, this is just rubbish, let's see what we can do with this, it's a good frame. And uh, I'm going to carry this, look around the farm, see what else I can find to make a system that's got water running through it all the time. I'm just making this up as I go along, so I'm not sure what's going to happen yet, but uh, we'll see if we get on. I'm going to stand this up straight, right against that there. These things. Got a hole in the top there, we're going in here. One, two, cable ties. Yeah, mate. Put those through there like that. Hey, Bruno. I've got that on the side to hold it up. They use these on criminals, so it should actually be tight enough to hold this up with stone. We get it right up like that. That should be okay. And one up the other side. I don't know if you can get it there or not. That, yeah, just tighten it up tight. Don't worry about that wood. That should, in theory, lift it lift it higher and should actually drop it to the end. So you've done as tight as you can go, and you? Oh, yeah, you get more. And that should that should allow the water to come down this end. Here, there we go. Problem solved. Problem solved. So it's slightly lower. Beautiful. Beautiful. Found this in the shed. This is perfect. We can run a belt off that. We can make that into our windmill. Once I've got it in here, I'm going to screw it in. I'm going to drill holes in here to hold that on. This is where I'm at with my windmill. It's pretty much like an aeroplane blade. It's got a few screws holding it on. I've drilled right through the wheel. And uh, we'll see if it, uh, if it works. The wind vane with the bore on it says that the uh, wind is coming from the southwest, and that's the predominant wind here, sort of. So I think that's where we'll point it for most of the time. See how we get on. Solar panel down here provides power to my little pump on there, basically an impeller, and it can pump about just under a meter height. I could go one more circulating the water planters for my wasabi which is around here what I need is I need something at night to run it so I want to run that off the windmill but I need 2,000 
revs per minute for a alternator and that's not going to be enough. See when I walk in front of this it actually stops temporarily so this runs basically off straight off the solar sun there's no battery storage. I could put a battery in between it to allow it to go for a bit longer and then charge it for the windmill. My windmill needs to be made so it can spin to face the weather because right now it's okay but as the wind changes it's not. Time for your medicine mate. So what we've got here we've got the CBD oil from Green Witchery. That's actually a really good one. It's 18% CBD. Yeah, we've got this here from the vet. Janine put me onto this and it really has been helping him a lot. He's had his posse yum this morning, but I also use this for his medication. So we're gonna give him a whole mill of this again. Time for your, your dope there, Bruno. It's a good boy. That's the first one. Okay. And here's how we do this. We hold it up that way. Eat up. And we keep the mouth that way, choose it. Chew it up. Come on, don't spit it out. Chew it up. That's a good boy. There we go. Down the hatch. Good boy. Good boy. Good dog. Go on, get down here. Yeah. She good, mate. Hey? Good boy. There's your CBD oil. You taste funny, doesn't it, eh? Yeah, I know. We're going to see some Bob Barley later on. Yeah, mate, it's just a wee bit to chew on. Good. Right, let's see if we can get this in, yeah? Without you bloody spitting it out, eh? Okay, you go. In your mouth. Keep the mouth up. Good boy. That's your good boy. She all down there? Did we get it all down there? Hey? Did we get it all down there? Good boy. Because he has been known to spit his pills out. Is that in there? Nothing coming out? Good boy. So we give Bruno his massage this morning. Just starting the back end, just pulling that out. Ideally, he'd be lying down, but he wants to stand. And if he wants to stand, he can stand. He's such a big dog, it's actually easier to get in there when he does stand. Mm. You can feel that muscle there. Just pulling it out like that. He enjoys it. Look at his face, he's just like, yeah, I'll have some more of that. He just goes, did you touch my balls there, Ethan? I felt something. <laughs> <laughs> Come here, mate, it's all right, eh? Can't really do it without it, eh? It's right when we're not yeah. eye contact, eh, boy? Yeah, he's, he loves the, loves the pats, eh? And uh, you carry on his back and I'll do his back straps there like this, just down here. Put a thumb on each side. He likes this. We're losing that winter coat now, it's coming away. Just down there. Good boy. Good boy. How's that mate? That feel good, eh? Getting a bit of love. A bit of love this morning. Good boy. That's your good dog. Good boy. That's your good boy. Yeah, this is making him feel good. He's got drugs in him now and he's got a good massage and he's had his walk and he's had his posse yum. What more does a dog need, eh, Bruno? Mm -hmm. Hey? What more does a dog need, eh, boy? Hey? Yeah, rub him down the back like that, mate. Let's finish off on that there. This is a really nice way to spend a Sunday morning. Native birds. Got a crossing just up here. Animals have come down. There's a crossing there. And the knife on it, too. Mark right there. So pigs have crossed here. Oh, well, that's the first mark I've seen. Probably about a 60, 70 pounder. Hopeful. Good boy. You're good boy, eh? What you doing, mate, eh? We've come across a lot of this wind blowing stuff on the track. Makes it noisy work. Can't really get through any other way. We're about, uh, I don't know, three hours now into it. Nothing. And you'd think so, because it's bloody good country. Give the dogs a bloody good, good crack. A lot of walking, very, very wet. That's Bill, that's Ned. We're only hunting two dogs today. And they belong to Joe, and that's his son Jacob. And that's one of the forestry workers that works with him. But this is where we've come out of, and it's a really good gully. I was really hopeful for a pig up there, but nothing at all. I think it's been hunted quite a bit. Beauty.
yeah find the halfway mark and we'll do half half and then it'll make a frame with these here that'll be good we're halfway there butch is a real hard worker it's butch there you can see walking young fella's driving the tractor butch is in his mid 60s he's not scared of a bit of work and he does a good job too he's a bloody good fencer they work for jamie at fence works so if you need a fence put on get hold of them they do a good job what's going on with dismo duck this morning haven't seen you you awake you in there? Oh, yeah, sitting there, are you? You gonna come out? Mm -hmm. Coming out? Come on. Yeah. Charity food. Okay. Where's your mate? So they're over there. Being antisociable, yeah? I think mum's uh, laying some more eggs in here already. It's amazing that little duck survived. You could have seen it when it first came out. His legs all twisted backwards. Now it's like a, almost like its siblings. A bit smaller, but going okay. Oh, what's going on here, old mate? Have you flown on the window and knocked yourself out, or something attacked you? You're not looking very flash, are you? Maybe a hawk's had you and you got away? You're not too happy. Can't see any marks in the window that you might have flown into. No, you're right. Something's had a crack at you. Something's actually attacked you, isn't it? Okay, leave it, Po. Hey? You don't look flash, not at all. Your feather's coming out. Did one of my dogs grab you? Bloody well better not have. Hey? Not looking too flash. Don't you touch. Did you do that? You better not have. You leave it, Pace. Don't touch. Don't you touch. You leave it. By golly. You leave it. Doesn't look very happy to me. Which one of you guys did that? Don't touch. I reckon one of the dogs is bit. It's sit down, Big Z. Leave it. I reckon one of the dogs has had a crack at that. Don't touch, Pace. You leave it. I'm watching you. Don't touch. Good boy. You leave it. Good dogs pose like I'm not touching it. You leave it, Pace. Get out of there, Pace. Don't trust these guys. Hey, you catch deer. You grab my sheep. Leave it, Pace. Get out of there. Good girl, Poe. Old mate's literally shitting himself. Poor bird. Well, we'll see what comes out of that. It's not looking flash. Good boy. Good dog. Coming up all right. Hey, not inside, mate. Hey, Bruno, outside. 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 Bruno, outside. Good dog. Knock me boots over. You stay outside, boy. Good dog. You stay here. He hasn't eaten his dinner. The ducks have eaten it. So I might go and shoot a rabbit because he loves rabbit. I just got a phone call from Murray, the neighbour, and he said there's kahawai out the front. This here's a sauerkraut with kefir, which is a great probiotic tucker. So you want to eat a probiotic and you want prebiotic. Prebiotics would be something like asparagus or garlic, nuts like pecan nuts, walnuts. And when you've got both tuckers in your belly, then you get the really good uh, health because gut health is where it all begins. The people that are longest living in the world all share one thing in common. They have a good balance of probiotics and prebiotics. Yet some of them are smokers and drinkers, but... Mmm. I'm just waiting for something to pop out. Got uh, a camera on me and I've got a camera on the ground. And it's a waiting game. I'm tempted to move. I'm tempted to go somewhere else. But this time of night, no luck. Ah, I've got a rabbit. Got one. 
got one. Found one. Okay, here we go. Get a clean shot. There we go. Miss fire. Miss fire. Fuck. That's a first. You can see there where the firing pins hit it. That's the ammo. You can't do too many of those. Well, that was my chance to get a rabbit. And bloody misfire. <laughs> Sorry, Bruno. Should have taken the old 22 out. That ammo never misfires. You probably really don't want to stay under there, mate. Well, it's been about a year since Bruno's been in the truck. We're going on a picnic, boy. Yes, we are. I've just given him a big drink, hydrated him. We're going to go down the beach. Here's the spot. And it's beautiful. And Bruno, I think, has gone to sleep in the back. It looks pretty wiped out. Come on, mate. Let's go for a walk, eh? Go for a walk. Wanna go for a walk? Eh? Hey? Go for a walk? Good boy. Come on, boy. Where you come? Come on, boy. Uh, throw this in the water, one of these here. Not expecting anything, there's no birds work in the water, but while we're down here, might as well kill two birds one stone. We might even get some lunch. Bruno, what you doing, eh, boy? He's loving this. He hasn't been down here for a long time. We gave him a big drink before we left, so he'd be nice and hydrated. Come on, mate. Come on. It's a good dog, eh? Good boy. Wow. Wow. Look at this boy. Oh, nice shady beach out of the sun. Good dog. Good boy. Bruno suddenly smelt my egg. He was like, I'll have that. Asparagus, salt, doesn't take long for seagulls, just going to put a bit of water in there, avocado, salt on it, and pepper, a bit of fish with it would have been nice but hey, I'll tear into this and be very happy with it all the same. And when I finish eating, the big fella will get his feed. You can probably see his dinner hiding in my bag. This pocket knife was gifted to me by one of my biggest supporters, Simon, in the UK. Simon's in a wheelchair. Simon's a great hunter and a man of a lot of knowledge who's helped me a lot through the years. Thank you, Simon. I love this knife, mate, and it stays in my pocket everywhere I go. I always make sure that I eat something fermented. Fermented cabbage or sauerkraut. Mmm. A very good natural probiotic. Gonna put the entire lot of duck fat over Bruno's dinner. In fact, I'm gonna add some more to that too. Bit of fat won't do him any harm at all. You're not actually supposed to be on the island over there, but I think these guys here are actually doing pest control. There's traps over there, and I'm pretty sure that's an old couple that do that. It does disturb the birds, but yes, they are. They're checking traps. Good. Excellent. Right. Time for Bruno's posse yum. Hey, boy. Got a cup for you, mate. Hey? What's that, eh? 
Ooh, look at that, eh? Mm. He didn't eat his dinner this morning, so we're hoping he's gonna eat this. Oh, I know you got sand all over it, mate. That's not good. There we go. Is he good, eh? Good boy. Good dog. Oh, yep. Yeah. Get that in ya. Good boy. Yeah, it's going pretty quick. Bit of taste good with that duck fat, eh? And all sorts of yummy stuff in there. Last bit, mate, last bit. Good boy. He's wagging his tail. He's big old dog. That's the first time I've seen my dog wag his tail in a long time. He hasn't got long to go now. And I thought I'd take him down the beach. He doesn't normally wag his tail, he's happy. That's great. It's sad when they're going to go. There's for a large breed. If he was a dog your size, it'd be okay. But no, no. He's, large breeds don't um, live that long. He's, he's full of riddled with cancer. Mm. I've got him on CBD all right now. Yeah, your dog's a happy wee dog. G'day, mate. No, he's just a pup. Oh, is it a pup, is it? Yeah. Well, he's 10 months. G'day, mate. He's a very puppy behaviour. He looks like he's got a little bit of... Uh, it's in a bit of terrier, is it? It's Jack Russell with oh. Shih Tzu Poodle. Oh, wow, what an so. intelligent cross. Bruno, come. Come on. Bruno. Come on, come on. Gorgeous day. Beautiful day. Good boy. Come here, boy. Up here, Bruno. Good little treat for you. What's that, eh? You know what that is? <laughs> yeah. Oh, don't tell me there's none left. Oh, there's one left. One left. There we go. Take this away. Now, posse yum sticks. Yeah, paste normally gets those, but you get that one, mate. Bit of a treat. Didn't last long. I tell you what, it takes paste a lot longer to eat it than that. Yeah. Need any more to drink or you had enough? Hey? You good boy? You had enough? Where's your good dog? Where's that, eh? Hey? Where's that, eh? Good dog. Good dog. Come on. Come on, Peppy. Peppy, come. <laughs> hey, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Good boy of this old fella here and this old fella. He's actually going really well right now. I don't think he's had any pain at all the last two or three days. And that dog on the beach is the first time I've seen him wag his tail a long time. So he's getting a spark up again. I thought that, honestly, thought I'd be putting him down about four or five days ago. And it's a real roller coaster of emotions with a dog that's failing. But the last three or four days, he's been good. I think it's his medication, uh, the CBD oil, I guess you could say medication. And also the, the warmth, like the, the air's warming up as we get into spring. You good boy? What you doing, eh? What you doing? He like hides his face. He's trying to be cute. Anyway, we'll finish up with a, uh, a little song in the harmonica. I don't know what it'll be. I'll just make something random up. Thanks for watching. Smash the like button if you're still watching so we know we've got something right for you. And we'll see you in the next video. And be good. If you can't be good, then be careful. See you later. What song's it going to be, Bruno? What song's it going to be, eh? What's it going to be? Dog and knife? Old dog, old dog? Bullshit, Bull, what are we going to sing? We've got something here. Don't knock me in the head because his head's bloody hurts. Dog and knife, yeah, dog and knife, haven't got time for a white coated life singing, dog and knife, dog and knife, haven't got time for a white coated life.
Well, I don't think he enjoyed that one. He's gone. Bruno, was it that bad? <laughs> I get up. He's like, I don't like that song. Hey, what's the story, man? What's the story? See you later, guys. Bruno, what you doing, buddy? Hey, what you doing, boy? Hey, you don't like that song. You used to like that song. Yeah? Is my harmonica playing and singing that bad, is it? Oh, jeez, Bruno. You're killing me, man. You're killing me. Good boy. Good boy. Come on, let's go for a walk, hey? Let's go for a walk. Come on. Let's go for a walk. Come on. Go for a walk. Come on. Good boy. Let's go for a walk. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good job.